they thought that Herb Dean made a mistake. Because while we are all lost in the idea of Herb goes to step in, Alex puts his hand out, Herb steps back. When you have an illegal strike, they are saying that they should have been separated and then they come back together as a fresh restart. Mm -hmm. It didn't happen. Very short time later, Alex landed the shot that put Jamal yeah. down. I'm not taking a side in this deal. What you make of that, the idea of generally when an illegal strike happens, they separate yeah. the athletes, they come back together, and yeah. then the fight restarts, wherein in that moment, felt like Alex had said, I've got my timing, I've got my foot placement. Yeah. He went and landed. They feel like they were much closer yeah, than they should have been. And you want to know what I finally saw? I finally saw something that I had never looked for. The entire time I watched Herb Dean, and I looked back, and I, I watched Alex, and I watched Alex finish, I go back, I watch Herb, and I work, watch Herb and Alex. What I never looked for is what Jamal did. Have you looked to see what Jamal did? Because Piera holds a hand and even says something to Herb. Stay back, I'm good. He says, and Herb, Herb was going to break the action to check on you. Whoa, he just checked on you. Right? Everybody's doing what they're supposed to be. But Jamal stopped. He stopped doing what he was doing and started doing something else, which was to relax. And then he's going, oh, we're not doing it. Okay. And it's going to be very slight. Can you see me? I'm going to do it right now. Are you ready? That's what Jamal did. But this is what he did. He took his eye off that ball just for, just for a, a, a set. But he turns that way. And now he's got to get back in. As he turns his head, Alex took the angle. This has never been spoke of. Or he looks away. And I think he might even make a set. Oh, okay. What? I, I felt like he, he even said something. And he comes back. Alex was over here. The new mythical fighter is focused Jamal Hill. If he didn't low blow Alex Pereira, he would have won the fight. They're turning this whole low blow thing around against Pereira, even though he was the guy that got hit low. If anybody should have lost focus, it should have been Pereira, but he kept his eyes on Jamal, told the ref, get out of my way, and stiffed him short and hard. The only focus Jamal Hill lost was from that Poetan left hook, and it wasn't just the focus that he lost there. The thing I don't understand is why is this excuse not being given to Alex Pereira if it's given to Jamal Hill? Pereira's the one that had to tell Herb Dean to get away. That was a distraction for Pereira that didn't allow him to continue to fight. They both paused. They both had to address the referee, more so Pereira. The ref allowed him to continue to fight. They both touched gloves and they continued. Even if Hill lost a bit of focus right there, honestly, who cares? Like, really, he did it to himself. Nothing got taken away from him. If a fighter loses focus on a fight and they did not get fouled, it's not even worth talking about. Defend yourself at all times and don't foul your opponents or like the main rules of combat sports. If Jamal Hill got low blowed and then Pereira advanced upon him and knocked him out, it's a whole different dynamic. He fouled Pereira. Now just to correct a couple things that they were saying here. So Daniel Cormier was saying that usually when a fighter gets fouled, the ref steps in, calls timeout, then resets the fight. But this doesn't always happen. Alex Pereira was a rare case where he didn't need the timeout. If we saw this in other fights before, the ref doesn't need to call a timeout unless the fighter needs a timeout. Pereira just made it look really cool with pushing him off and keeping his eyes on Jamal Hill, then instantly knocking him out. It made it feel like it was a one-off case, but it actually wasn't. Now, one thing that Chill said was that Jamal Hill looked to the side, and once he looked forward, Alex Pereira already took an angle on him, but this is not true. If you look at the entire sequence, I can't show the video, but if you go and look at the fight again, watch that sequence, Jamal Hill never turns his head. That makes you think like he looked at somebody else. Now, it is true that Pereira did step forward and slightly to his left. That is very true, but what's also true is, before they touch gloves, Jamal Hill was moving to his left while touching gloves. He didn't touch gloves, then move. He was moving while touching gloves. And this goes into another thing that Daniel Cormier was talking about, in that Pereira got closer to Hill than Hill expected because of that lapse in time where Pereira stepped forward. This is not an issue. He did that, and it's not an issue. The only reason why the ref even walked in was because Pereira grabbed his cup as he got kicked there, not because he got hurt, but looked like he was readjusting his cup for a second, but was willing to continue to fight. He didn't need Herb Dean to step in at all. So yes, Pereira did step closer, but Jamal Hill was also moving away at the same time. There were hand fighting with each other, which they have done multiple times throughout the fight. So Jamal Hill did not get put in a position that he was unfamiliar with. He was in this position before. I could show you something very, very similar. You can mistake in this 
for the knockoff sequence. They seem to be in a similar position, but this image right here happened two minutes before the knockout even happened. This is a completely different time in the fight, but Jamal Hill did the same thing. They hand fought with each other. They have the same distance between them two as they did when Pura knocked them out. There's a couple differences where Jamal Hill is not as backed up. He's like two feet forward about, but he's looking to step off on the outside foot angle with his lead foot. He brings his lead hand forward. Pereira is looking to trap it, and Hill extends with the left straight, just like when he got knocked out. This was not an unfamiliar territory for Jamal Hill at all. Pura would have gotten this angle and this distance on Jamal Hill regardless. He got that position before, and he was about to get it again. All these excuses for Jamal Hill really are not even worth mentioning. So here's everything that happened once they touched gloves. They both touched gloves, they continued to fight, Hill got moving, he threw the first punch, the same punch that was missing the whole fight. Pereira got that thing down, he was not going to get hit by the left straight. Pereira had that left hand locked down. He grabbed the lead hand as Jamal Hill was posting, even though his back was close to the fence. Pereira stepped on his foot, which I don't know if it was on purpose. It wouldn't change anything because Jamal Hill planted himself regardless, so he wasn't really going anywhere. Pereira faked the right straight to the body, which is going to get his head lowered forward and slightly on the left angle, but as he rises up, corking that left shovel hook, his head's going to move to the right which gets his head on the outside of Jamal Hill's left straight. It was over. He had it locked down. There was nothing Jamal Hill was doing in that sequence. He got knocked out. Focused, not focused. It's not an excuse for him losing there. In fact, it doesn't impact it at all. Daniel Cormier is mentioning how they should have restarted the fight after Pereira gets low blowed. For what reason? Why well, would you reward Jamal Hill for low blowing him? But then again, this is the sport of MMA where if you eye poke someone, you can win by knockout. The guy that won like that is the same guy that Daniel Cormier has been defending too. So I don't know what kind of bias this is. First for Wyman, now for Jamal Hill. Like these guys want these fighters to get away with fouls. It's up to the guy who got low blowed on what happens. That's what it all should come down to. And credit to Herb Dean for not giving into this strangeness of rewarding Jamal Hill. Hey, let me back Pereira up. Let me talk to him and then bring you guys both to the center of the cage. Why would that ever happen? Alex Pereira should be the one that has a say in what goes down now. He didn't want Herb Dean involved. He hunted his prey and KO'd him. That's what should happen. If Pereira wanted to talk to the ref and go back to the center, that should be on him. Not on the guy who fouled him. And if Jamal Hill lost focus, that's on him, man. He should be the one that should have stayed in focus. And Pereira should have been the one that lost focus. In a normal situation. But Pereira's a different kind of beast. He didn't lose focus. Credit to him. And handled the former champion. The real critique about the fight is questioning why Jamal Hill did not shoot takedowns. That is the ultimate critique. Not thinking he should get away with low-blowing Pereira. One of the narratives or questions going into the fight was, quote, Pereira's not as good as we think he is unquote right Jamal Hill was talking about this other analysts were talking about this other fighters were talking about this and now that he beats Jamal Hill easier than he's beaten anybody else in the UFC all of a sudden there's excuses not from Jamal Hill credit to him he didn't say anything like that he's taken the loss respect to him but the same people that were talking about Pereira just not being as good about how Jamal Hill is a better striker how he's more powerful how he's more experienced all this stuff right of how he should beat Alex Pereira because Pereira is not as good as the public thinks he is Pereira is even better better than the public thinks he is. That's the truth of it. And after witnessing it, the public's excited, they're in awe, they're amazed. That's the truth. It's not the other way. It's not that Alex Pearl only won because Jamal Hill lost focus because he low-blowed him. That doesn't make any sense. Pereira was just the better fighter. 